Hi there, I'm Phil Broadhead, Deputy Leader of BCP Council. Welcome to another episode of our mini series of podcasts where we talk to some of the, the people and businesses that secured grant funding for the council to find out about their projects, their journey and how it's gone for them. Today I'm talking to Cecile from Stories for Wellbeing and we'll be exploring uh, her project that she secured some grant funding for, how it's evolved and how they're using the power of stories to help people in their well-being. So, hi, Cecile. Thank you very much for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and about Stories for Wellbeing and, and how you got involved. Okay, well, thanks Thanks very much for being here. I really appreciate that. And um, I also want to thank Bournemouth for being here because that's part of the reason why I'm here. So when um, COVID hit, I used to work in international adoptions. And um, when COVID hit, obviously, those everything stopped then. So I didn't know, we didn't know how long it was going to be or mm. what was going to happen. So I had to rethink really quickly because I'm a single mum. So um, I wanted to... and. Because I've been working in an area which had such a small um, market, mm -hmm. I wanted to try to see something, do something which had a bigger market so that I could sort of hit a greater number of people to help them. So I was thinking of different ways, what, what I could do, what I, how I could help other people, what, what were my interests, how, you know, business models, and I was trying to um, fabricate everything. And one of my colleagues that I work with, she, her daughter is, they live in Italy, and I used to read stories to her. We used to do oh, Zoom wow. story lessons, yeah. yeah. So just story lessons and read to her and to, for her to improve her English. Loves it, loved me, thought I was uh, the best person ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, this is... So I just thought, well, this is really good. If she's if she's enjoying it and loving it, then then um, others would too. Mm. And also, I have um, I have a daughter and who has struggled through school, mm. and also on that cusp of. Um, all, you know, all the kids feeling really having a little bit of mental unwellness, if we can put it that way. And I thought, what is it that we had, I had, that they don't have now? That you could contribute to, yeah. Yeah, yeah I just okay. thought, well, one of the things is, is, you know, stories and literature. And we used to do that all the time. And nobody reads. My daughter doesn't read. Well, she's going to read. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she on, will the, now. on yeah. the path, yeah. Um, so, so then I thought, okay, well, let's try this. And so I sort of started to, and then I started to develop this idea to put stories and have them read, read out loud because that's really helps people who, yeah. especially the learning English, um, and it's very comforting and it's, in, you know, engaging when you listen to stories. Jack and Ori was one of the most popular mm. TV programs. And, um, and that's kind of developed and I, I used to have a, when I, I, had remedial reading when I was little mm. because I, I, I struggled to read. And so I took that remedial reading program that I had when I was little, which was listening to the words, reading the words at the same time, comprehension, a bit of vocab. So I put it all together in this package so that they could listen to stories, read at the same time, comprehension test, learn the vocabulary. And then the most important bit was the use your imagination section. Wow. So take what you've take what you've read in the story and then apply it to yourself or you know use your words and write it um, write it down draw a picture. Fantastic. So you 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 saw a gap, you saw a need, you saw your skills and your talents and mm. and I suppose just went for it and at a time when we were coming out of covid I imagine that was quite quite was it did that make it easier or was that more difficult? Well, I think it was in the middle of COVID. So I, yeah, we were just at home. Was, so, yeah. you know, what was I doing? I, you know, I had to do something. So I was just like, because I'm always busy. So it's like something I was like, you know, I had to fill the space. So, well, yeah, it's a huge, big learning curve. Mm. So the whole learning curve to just learn how the, what platform to use, how to bring it across, what materials to use, um, engaged actors, did all the recording for the actor, you know, with the actors, sending it over. So I created this whole, you know, the whole program. Fantastic. So when we were uh, setting up as a council and, and thinking about how we could support uh, people through the pandemic and setting up things like the Bounce Back Challenge Fund, our aim was to think differently, not just help businesses to survive, but help the whole area to bounce back and, and thrive. Tell us a little bit about your uh, your plans when you heard about the Bounce Back Challenge and, and what you thought you could contribute via that. Well, of course, everybody needs to start a business. You need mm -hmm. money because... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, what you don't, what what they don't teach you in Harvard Business School is it takes twice as long and yeah. twice as much money. Um, so yeah, and I, as when I was doing all the research of the stories, some of the, my favorite stories, I suddenly realized they were all kind of there's connections to mm. this area. Yeah, 
So you've got, you know, Robbie Lou Stevenson who lived here. You've got you know, um, Alice for, who inspired Alice in Wonderland who lives in the New Forest. You've got Tess of the Herbivores, which was just here, mm -hmm. <laughs> her and yeah. So there was this, so it's like, okay, well, everything is, is there's, there's all these connections. So it started to get kind of, all right, we can maybe put this in together into a whole sort of creator which is what I wanted to do, like a literary map of 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 Bournemouth, mm. so they can follow the you know the paths and see where people have been. Um, so yeah, so I saw the fund, I applied for it because it was just something that was connected to the Bournemouth, but also that could help the people and also can, can scale up. You know, that's the main thing. Mm. The whole the whole um, business model can scale up. So walk us through the the project itself and how it began, and I suppose how it evolved as as time went on as well. Okay, so. So we set it. So I set it all up. It was already. It was all you know as um, English classic story time. It yeah. started off as English classic story time because that's what I was reading the classic stories. So all of the stories are actually the classic stories of literature, mm. and mainly I chose those because they've stood the test of time, mm -hmm. and they stood the test of time because they For speak to us as humans. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and they are very complex, and they have, um, and they're very relationship based. And I just think, um, you know, we need the kids today need more resilience in learning and understanding relationships and how they, you know, they shift and change, they rupture, they repair, and they're long, you know, the mm. longevity of it. Um, so I st so it was English classic story time. Um, yeah, I set it, you know, set it all up and um, got my branding, did all the stuff and the logos and everything. I was really happy. And then last Christmas, I did a whole big um, campaign and to to launch it and um, set it all up and let it fly. And, and what's, what's the reaction been then? How well, how is it how has it landed? Well, it was not as not as with the English classic story times not as excitingly as I would have liked to have happened mm. because there was some response. It was like, well, why why pay for something when I can just get it free out the library? It was difficult for people to engage, and. Um, Essentially, for myself, I had all the time this idea behind it, which was mm. on the bibliotherapy, which is using books for as therapeutic as a therapeutic um, form. Yeah, and I studied. Um, I studied at university. I studied relig religions in my BA, and I did medical anthropology for my masters. Oh. So it's something that I've been the words, language. All the that, the story, the too. power of the yeah. stories, uh, you know, the, the thing about the Bushman, you know, the, there's a whole healing thing. So that's, so that's the whole side of me, which I've been working on for. And um, I, I was going to do that later. So I'm going to do English classic story times. So I'm going to just get this going and happening and spread it all over the world. So, And um, then I'm going to work on this other side that comes next yeah but then after after my christmas then the campaign and it wasn't so i mean you know it's a learning curve as well so it's sort of i, I need to know awareness i kind of forgot the awareness bit out of my mm. my business, my business <laughs> plan. happens to the best of yeah, us. yeah yeah so it's also, okay yeah. i'm going to present this everyone's going and then i thought you know it's just not working for me mm. it, not working for me as a person because it's a lot of energy i'm doing and actually um i am then in the English as a second language or the education sector. And I'm now not passionate about either of those sectors. Because, well, the, um, um, having a kid gone through the education system, I'm very opposed to the <laughs> education system. And you have to change a whole lot, but I've, uh, it's a monolith. Um, so then I thought, well, why am I now I'm spending all this energy doing this thing which may is not taking me into where, where I have a passion. Mm. So let me bring from the back burner my the idea about bibliotherapy, see what that's which all about. Which you really believed in, you know. That which, was, yeah, well, yeah. I, I, didn't know any, I didn't know about it. I just had read it. Yeah. I went, oh, you know, it piqued that interest. And you're sort of like, oh, yeah, I can't, I'll look at that another time. And then I thought, oh, no, I have to. Let's just see what this is. And then I started to look and started to read up and started to study it. And then, okay, this is because it's all um, – so the bibliotherapy essentially is that it works and that the reading of the literature can actually change the neurological pathways of your brain. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah in microwaves. And then what happens is these microwaves change and then you have a breakthrough on a macro level which unblocks that which is, is being hidden or buried 
And then you sort of like suddenly got this new zest for life and a new sense of purpose. So how did you take that forward then? How did you embed that into what you were doing? So I had to pivot. Mm. The big key word, isn't yeah. it? Pivot. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I have to take so this in essence. So so I was very fortunate because in essence, the same thing applied. So yeah, I had the yeah, same yeah. the same basis, but my focus was different. Yeah, it's about so focus, then I yeah. then I switched the focus, and then of course you have to switch your branding, you have to switch your your kind of your language, your marketing. You've you know you've got to switch that all around. So and then I've been developing. So over this last year, I've been developing that side. And that's where stories for well being came that's out. That's stories yeah. for well being. Yeah. So now I'm like, like in the in the well being market. Mm. Okay, which is huge. So well, and it, but it seems it just seems really apt for the the times, doesn't it? First of all, you've got obviously the the the, the fallout from COVID, and and you know people needing uh, more focus on well being, but also I think people have reconnected and understand themselves and the importance of that in a way that maybe they they haven't done before. I mean, we've actually got aspirations as as a as a council area uh, for BCP to be the well being capital of the UK oh, because really? well we, we've we've got I think we've got the great balance of natural environment as well as uh, you know economic environment and it's why people like being here. But also I think people are more aware here of all of that. So it kind of feels like the right time to be to be focusing on that. And of course, we've got cost of living and all of those pressures coming forward. So, do you think that you know the the, the refocus on that is is really relevant for some of the challenges we've got coming ahead? Absolutely, and I think for me, it's the mental it's the mental um, health. Mm. You know, I'm really really concerned about the mental health. And yeah. having a teenager, I think you you are you really really aware of the mental health of people and how they how they have struggled. And this kind of the whole thing about the story is just fits into so many loneliness. So we mm. have, you, you can listen to Bev reading um, The Secret Garden. You're not going to be lonely because she's a beautiful reader and you can see her. So that whole thing, as opposed to audio books where it's, you know, you, you have to be doing something. Yeah, you can just sit down and, you know, listen. And actually and, watch as well. Yeah, watch it and listen and sort of um, knit away or something. Um, it's, it's, it can, it's teachers resilience. So the kids, you know, Resilience, understanding how things how how things work, and our th our thing about the imagination. So Einstein mm. said, you know, knowledge is important, but you know, imagination is everything, because knowledge is limited mm. and imagination is unlimited. So to create that sense of imagination, which then goes into problem solving, it then because you know, it then goes into um, feeling better about yourself. It has a whole whole series of of kickoff effects. On um, on what they on how people feel yeah. and what they're doing and how they see the world. I mean, it's really and it's it's actually quite interesting that the journey that you've been on as well. You know, see having that idea, putting it into action, having a bit of realization that the focus needed to change, and clearly really passionate about the direction it's gone. How how's it been received? Well, I'm just still still on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's always like one week away, one week away. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, so much more. I mean, the, everybody's so much positive about it. Mm. I went up to London to, for an event. Wow. You know, they're very, very interested. It's very big corporate. Very um, corporate's very big in, in well being. Mm. Yeah, it's, so, it's a huge part of yeah people. And it's big. easy to access because it's just it's it's online. And what we do there's a, there's two other aspects of it as well. So it's we have a journal. Well, mm -hmm. I'm in the process of creating the journal. So the imagination you can then start writing writing in your journal oh, okay. about yeah. it, so feed on it. And then we have the listening circle. So once a week you just, so it's, you know, basically come in into the Zoom. Um, six people will have a have a chance to talk. You just listen to what people have to say. Maybe they've been inspired by something they've read. Maybe they need a, a hug. Maybe they need some help. And um, so, so it's it's a full incorporated well-being so it's kind program. Of about community. It's 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 obviously about well-being and personal resilience, but there's I suppose a social and community aspect to it as well. I think so. Yeah, it's, mm. it's creating connections. Yeah. that's because I think the connections during co during COVID definitely all got seriously yeah. damaged and broken. Everything everything just changed, didn't it? Yeah. So it's just to slowly build, you know, build up those connections, um, see people. And from my studies, it was, you know, I realized, and I'd wanted to do this for a very long time, have a narrative. Because I think mm. and, um, that if people could go and talk to somebody before they went to see the doctor, 
they would no longer need to go and see the doctor. Yeah, yeah, yes, very true. So yeah. that that point of having your narrative, speaking your story, telling your truth, and have something to listen, I think is really, really vital. I mean, it sounds really exciting what you've done to date. What's next? Give us a hint about what you know. How, where does it go? Have you got other ideas that you want to focus on? Well, I'm just tell us, tell us a secret. Yeah, go on. no, no, there's no secret. <laughs> so I mean, basically, to get that out, it's now on a course. So it's so so we do it as a course. So you can do it three months or six months and have it. So it's an intense course mm. and you can part of. And I have just made an application for some funding for um, a podcast, um, Treasure Island Books. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, which is essentially interviewing people and asking them about their books and yeah. what happens, what books. So, like Desert Island does. That's but interesting because actually, only about it's, books. it's how it's impacted them as well, isn't it? Has that's it? that's that's what's great about reading. Everybody has a different personal experience, which means something to them. Yeah, and I think it shapes people. So, if you're like, "Oh my God, I read Black Beauty. I couldn't even believe her. I, you know, that's why I just love animals and like that." You know, the, all these things come from, you know, come from what yeah. you what you read when you were read when you were younger. So we have, and then I have, I mean, English classical story times has not gone away. Mm. So mm. that hasn't disappeared. So my colleague is like kind of working on that as well because he's a, he's a um, English as a second language person. So he has a passion for that. Because we've got a huge uh, industry in the BCP region around second language. You've got language schools and the the knock on effects of the economy. So it's quite it's you know it's quite an important thing to our local economy as well. That whole second language and teaching people English. And I suppose this is another tool in the arsenal, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So that's also why that's also why I started to do that because yeah. I think I could I could I could um, target you know I could target all those schools and there was some interest. I think it wasn't um, the, it wasn't packaged enough so the idea was was it just wasn't in that form so mm. so it's just a, it's a process of just tweaking it all those bits until it engages so yes that is so english classic story is on we have we do have people who are engaged in it we're very fortunate to have had some um ukrainians who refugees oh, who, wow, yeah. who joined who, yeah. who joined in um i've wanted to you know I'm, you put out all these feelers so Get involved in the literacy program from from BCP because it can help. It's mm -hmm. really so. Being online, the whole program is so accessible that you just have it's just there. Mm -hmm. So there's no cost. There's no extra costs involved. You don't have to do it any place or time. It's flexible. You can do it as much as you like, as little as you want. You can engage. We've got a whole. I've got. Um, so we're building up stories all the time. So I've got forty seven titles now, which go 47. really from wow. from um, nursery rhymes. And now we're working on Middlemarch. And Middlemarch is apparently the best novel ever written. It's a controversial statement, but I'll, I'll let you make yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't read it, but my, uh, my colleague who does the dictionary, so he's mm. just going through it and trying, you know, all the words and all the meanings. And he's just like, oh, my God, you know, you go on one path like this and then she twitches you around like this and then she pulls you back like that. And wow. she's like, yeah. So it's a... Uh, Fantastic. So, and I suppose if it hadn't have been from that funding of, of where do you think you'd be now if, if you hadn't have uh, been successful with that oh, bounce back knows, challenge? Who knows? Who yeah. knows? I think somewhere. I mean, I think I'm really, really, from personally, on a personal level, I'm really, really happy because this is what I will be doing for the next 20 years. Lovely. Because yeah. there's no, it's a, a thing that keeps on growing. You keep on learning. There's, but you're clearly there's passionate about it. I mean, that's the important yeah, thing. Different aspects yeah. about it. So, yeah, I, who knows? <laughs> Fantastic. And, Final question. We've heard all about the the different things that are on offer and the ways that you know people can get involved. How would they find out more if they wanted to find out more about the uh, the, the 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 different projects that you've got underway? Well, so I've got my website, mm -hmm. which is um, storiesforwellbeing.com, and also obviously on social media, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Um, and then I'm going to start my marketing campaign for January. And ja well, I'm starting now, so it's all happening in January. Fantastic. So, maybe it's flies through exciting time as well it is. thanks for talking to us thank you for well thank you for for sharing your journey it's, uh, it's it's really interesting and that focus on well-being just seems just so so relevant at the moment it's been a fantastic chat thank you very thank much thank you very much thank, thank you. you brilliant 
So thanks for joining us for today's episode. If you want to hear a little bit more about some of the other journeys that the businesses have been on as we help them through the pandemic, check out some of the other episodes in this mini series. And also a big urge to all businesses, charities and organisations in the BCP region. Our economic development team at the Council are here to support you both through today and tomorrow, including some of the other grant funding that may be available in the future. So make sure you sign up to our BCP business newsletter and hopefully we can help you in the future. Thanks for joining us.